before we could make our way over to his hangout, something came up. They told us they were going to cut her into little pieces. The other officers headed to the local bar to investigate the threat. The team stayed in constant contact through cell phones. You'll understand why a little later in the night. We drove to a nearby park where some other gang members live. The investigator in shadows tells us teens carry out many crimes here in the valley because the penalties aren't as stiff for juveniles. They're pretty much the ones pushing the dope across the border or pushing the people back to Mexico tied up, you know, in a trunk somewhere or they're, they're the ones pretty much engaging in all the pursuits locally. Young teens often want to prove themselves or want protection. Just before six this evening, Border Patrol units spotted and then caught up with 11 illegal immigrants trying to cross over into the U.S. They were caught south of beneath us, where the border wall straddles military highway. When we were there, a DPS chopper was still on the hunt for two illegals who Border Patrol officials say escaped. We observed about six women and five men being patted down and then placed into a Border Patrol van to be transported to Border Patrol headquarters. We got our first glimpse of the chase up in the air. A DHS chopper was keeping its eye in the sky on the driver of a white Mustang, now headed east on Expressway 83 in Mission. Then the chase took a turn north. We knew we were on the right track when we saw Border Patrol and Mission Police heading north on Benson Palm. Two and a half miles later, the chase comes to an end. Police say the driver knew he couldn't outrun the chopper, so he pulled over without incident. Correction, we're still probably two or three behind the actual firing. Poor ass, Christian, Sergeant. A community on watch. Yeah, the first house is good, but the uh, next three or four houses up are getting a little bit of smoke. 16 acres scorched. So that smoke right there is just starting to lay down just a tad. Yeah, if they can go ahead and put it back in there. Yeah, no impact to the homes here. Thad Hertzberger helped set this fire. He did it to protect you. There's two reasons. One is habitat maintenance. It's going to take off all the dead and down and uh, let the emergent vegetation come up a lot, a lot healthier. And then also secondarily, it's going to help for hazardous fuel reduction and wildfires. U.S. Fish and Wildlife firefighters torched this state wetland. Just moments after this accident happened on Cage Boulevard, just underneath the 281 overpass, Denise Velasquez drove by the scene. We did see a lady sitting underneath that car, the car that's on the bottom. She happened to look at us. Her face was kind of bloody. And uh, then we came back just to see, make sure everybody was called, the ambulance, the police, Channel 5 News. So we... You know, it's a pretty scary scene. Hope, you know, pray for all those involved. A medevac chopper maneuvered its way to the intersection, but we found out it didn't have to be used. Too many fish to count in an area too small to drop a line. This puddle is only eight inches deep, barely, and there's got to be a hundred fish in there probably. This isn't for any fishermen. It's a great opportunity for us to get some research fish we've been looking for. These guys are biologists studying alligator gar. They're the decision makers on how much you can fish. Study these fish to see how they grow. It takes a burden off the local pond. They're the only ones left alive in there. Nothing much can survive around these top tier food predators. Well, I like the job. I like coming to work. Saturday I work, but Sunday I don't work. I stay in bed. <laughs> A 40 hour work week is unknown for Esther Hill. Well, I'm supervisor. From 5 in the morning to sometimes 6 at night. Nearly every day of the week. 43 years. <laughs> she's here. This isn't just her job. It's her way of life. Company owners know there is a shift in generations. It was a family business. I grew up in it. People like the owner Bill Stalker and Esther Hill are rare these days. Palace Cleaners has two job openings. The positions don't have folks lining up. A day full of ironing or pressing or folding doesn't appeal to many. I think they think that being uh, working in the cleaners 
makes you go down. But it's not. It's interested. That's the shift in generations. They say there's no jobs, but there's a lot of jobs that anybody can do. Edongo County's poverty rate ranks among the top 10 in the state. Unemployment numbers soar. Here, there are jobs. I would like to employ people uh, today full time that would like to learn a skill that they can take anywhere with them. It's certainly not a glory job. And you wouldn't ever get rich working for me. But it is honest, hard work, and one that would be consistent. Stocker wants full-time employees. That's hard to find. This doesn't make sense to you. Just wait. When you come to work for me, you come to work as a minimum wage person. Uh, once you're trained, then depending on your skill level, you're paid more money. The money is the problem. A formal education is not required, just a clean background. Training is on the job. The minimum wage turns some people away. Stalker says some people have more incentive to stay home. A lot of people are on some form of assistance, and if they come to work to uh, for us full time, they lose the benefits of that assistance. I interviewed somebody just the other day. She came in, we sat down, we visited, and she said, but, but Bill, I can only work 21 hours. <laughs> she said, I can't lose my benefits. But she said, I could work for you for 21 hours a week. It seems Uncle Sam's business pays better. They say that the entitlements, if you're able to get them, are more beneficial than working. So I'm competing against, <laughs> I'm com competing against uh, the entitlements. I can't provide child care. Uh, I can't provide food stamps. Your generation, some of them, some, don't like to be told what to do. They think that they know everything right away. And, and here, every day, you, you learn something, even myself. After 43 years? Yes, you learn something. One more job opening will be available soon. See how they stretch. 43 years? That spandex. Is long enough for heel. She's retiring when she turns 80. I don't do any washing at home. <laughs> so I'm going to have to learn when I leave. <laughs> That will leave another void at the cleaners, a job opening that will need to be filled. Palace Cleaners owners know they won't replace Hill. They can only hope to find someone who understands the value of a hard, honest day of work. Melodies it reminds me to my dad sometimes. That are distant memories. He teach me how to play when I was little. Can create a symphony of sadness. I see him like a stranger now. He's a stranger to you. How come? Because like he left since I was little. They define the life of a girl. I was born in San Benito. Mom, she's in Mexico. Oh, with a heart beating bravely every day. I am going to start crying now. Yeah. Okay no, no, it's not okay. Even when it's carrying a heavy burden. I sleep with my nephew. We have one bed. Her name is Sonia Tovar. And I'm 17 years old. Almost 18. She lives with a sister in a tiny house in Brownsville. Her daily destiny begins with three hours on a bus. Sometimes it makes me mad because like, I stay, I stand here waiting and waiting. Because if you're not specifically in the, in the bus stop, the bus won't stop and get you. Sonia and I waited and waited and waited almost half an hour before the bus came on this day. The late running buses got Sonia into trouble at Brownsville ISD. She was often late. The district cited her. Then her uncle had an accident in Matamoros. Her mother got sick. Sonia went there to help. She keeps getting older and older, and I'm scared to, like, lose her. Sonia missed whole days of classes. The district kicked her out. She admits she didn't tell them what was going on in her life. It was really hard. 
I was like, oh, what am I gonna do now? She was one more mouth to feed at her sister's house. Two more meals every day without school breakfasts and lunches. So we have to save food and not eat a lot so we can eat all week. It's one of those times you just want your mother. When I needed my mom to talk to her, like she, she wasn't there. So I had to like hold everything and move on with myself. Between the notes and the miscues, I look for another way. She found some harmony in her heartache. She totally changed everything. He gave me a big opportunity. Sonia found Youth Build in Brownsville. It's a nonprofit organization helping young people. I work on construction and I also they also teach us like math and everything, all what we need to get our GED. She's painting a better path. We're not only making something, we're we're just we're also helping a family that want a house. A family living way below the poverty line. Their struggles are hers too. She gets a small stipend to work here. $191 a month doesn't go far. She gives half to her mother, 20 to herself. She saves anything left over. Her small salary isn't enough to even buy the basics. When I have money, I don't think like of buying clothes or buying like material stuff. I think of my family, I think of food, necessary stuff that I need. She's learned how to measure heartache. I would just get really mad and stressful. And I started like giving up. But I decided that no more giving up on anything. She has a handle on hope. I want to go to college. In her head. My dream is to succeed, succeed in life. And in her heart. I want to be someone important when I grow up and be able to like help my family and not have to go to trouble. Her passage from despair to determination taught her practice makes perfect. When you're playing the piano. I feel better when I play the piano. Or finding a purpose in the rear view mirror of a painful past. With photojournalist Enrique Sainz, Farah Fazal, Channel 5 News at 1030.